Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATIT study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 177. And we are on page number 101. We are in the process of solving problems that you see there in the quiz, which we are referring to as test number 3. The test number 1 and 2 appeared in the previous edition, the 5th edition, and you will find the solutions to all the problems that appeared in the 5th edition from day number 1 through 80, particularly the test 2 and test, uh, test 1 and test 2. Exam 1 was done on day number 61 through 70, and exam 2 was covered from day number 70, 71 through 80 if you are interested in getting some extra practice. Today we are going to do problem number 23 and 24. Problem number 23 and 24. Problem number 23 says that we have somebody who earns, this person earns $10 per hour for mowing. And we are told that he earns $15 per hour for trimming. And let's, see, let's read the question instead of just making things up here. I'm going to read it to you as uh, verbatim. It says the student mows and trims loans to earn money for textbook. It's important that you have the book in front of you. You shouldn't rely on my having to read the problem to you. Do you understand? She earns, you see, we just changed the gender. She earns, because I kept referring to this person as a he. She earns $10 an hour for mowing when she, when she mows the lawn, and she charges $15 an hour when she is trimming. She has mowed for 30 hours, okay? So we know that she has already mowed for 30 hours. Has mowed 30 hours. And we also are told that she wants to earn $600 total. $600 total. What is the question asking? The question is asking probably how much trimming she has to do, how many hours. Number 23. She, she has mowed for 30 hours. Which of the following is the number of hours remaining that she must trim to earn the total of $600. Well, a total of $600 is the same as saying the remaining $300 because she has already earned $300. She has already earned $300. You see, we are told that she has mowed for 30 hours. Well, if she has mowed for 30 hours and she charges $10 an hour when she's mowing, so has earned, has already earned $300, which is 30 times, 30 times $10 that she does. She needs to earn another three hundred dollars. Needs, needs to earn three hundred dollars more by trimming. And for trimming, she charges fifteen dollars an hour. So here we go. Three hundred dollars that we need to earn, and we're going to divide it by what she charges by the uh, for the trimming, which is fifteen dollars per hour per hour. And what we find, the very first thing we notice is. The dollars are going to drop out from top and bottom, and this hours on the top, on the bottom is going to end up on the top. So what we're looking for is 300 divided by 15. 300 divided by 15. And if you have, if you have trouble dividing 300 by 15, don't write 300 as 300. Write 300 as 30 times 10 over 15. As a matter of fact, that's what I should have done in the beginning, because that's what we had to start out with, 300 times 10. When you have something like this, don't make it complicated by multiplying it out. Leave it like this until the very end. I always tell you to do that and I violate my own rule. Leave it like this until the very end. So we have 300 times 10 divided by 15 is very simple. 30 is made up of two 15s. Divide top and bottom by 15s. And we end up with 2 times 10, which is 20 hours. If she just trims 20 more hours, she has already more for 30 hours. If she trims for another 20 hours, she's all set. She will have the money that she needs to buy her textbook. 
And I cannot believe that kids these days need that much money just to buy the textbook. $600, my God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, let's do the next one, number 24. The prices of textbook these days are outrageous. In number 24, we are told that we have 28 students, a total of 28 students, of which we are told that 16 of them use laptops. Question is, what is the percentage? Question is, what is the percentage of those who do not use laptops? What is the percentage of the students in the class who do not use laptops? As a matter of fact, the book, the question itself does not say who do not use laptop. What the question says is that what's the percentage of the students in the class who use something other than laptops? Well, that is the same thing. What's the percentage of people who do not use laptops? They are using something other than laptops. Do you understand? Let's find out, shall we? The first thing you have to figure out is how many are those people? How many people are there in the class who do not use laptops? Well, it's right here. We can squeeze it. Well, let's do it down here. 28 people are the total. We just subtract 16 people who use it, and we'll have the people who don't use it. 8 minus 6 is 2. And 1 minus 4, it's just 12. 12 do not use laptops. Or well, if they do not use laptops, they must use something other than laptops. Assumption being that everybody is using something. You have to read the question yourself. So it's 12. And if you want to find the percentage of the people who do not use a laptop, it is simply 12 out of the total number, which is 28. And we have to find that in percentage. We have to find what this number is in percentage, which we can do in the top so we can see it. 12 out of 12 out of 28. Let's raise all of this thing. 12 out of 28. And since it's a percentage, whenever you want to convert a fraction into percent, you have to multiply it by 100. Of course, if somebody asks us what is 3 fifths in percentage, well, in decimal is 0.75, but if you want it in percentage, you got to multiply it by 100, because this part is 0.75, and if you want it in percentage, you're going to multiply it by 100, so that it becomes 75%. So if, you, if, it, if it's in fraction form, and you want it in percentage form, you need to multiply that by 100, because percentage is out of 100. That's what we are doing here. First thing we notice is that 28 is a multiple of 4. Did you know that? 20, 28 is a multiple of 4, and how do we know that? Because we know our fours table. How do we know it? Because we know our table of four. Uh, four sevens are twenty-eight. Four sevens are twenty-eight. Four sevens are twenty-eight. Four ones are four ones. Uh, four sevens are twenty-eight. Or if you like, if you like, seven fours are twenty-eight. Seven fours. Do you understand? 1 7 is 7, 2 7s are 14, 3 7s are 21, 4 7s are 28. That's the multiple of 4. As a matter of fact, I just realized that 12 is a multiple of 4 and so is 10. Uh, so is 100. So it doesn't matter which one you use, you could use either. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. When you divide 20, 28 by 4, it becomes a 7. And let's divide, let's divide the top by 12 by 4, it becomes a 3. Are you with me so far? Okay, watch what happens here now. We're trying to figure out what that is in percentage. So when we figure this all out, the final answer, what do we get? It's going to be a percentage. So 3 times 100, which is 300, divided by 7. Now, I'm going to do it first. Let's do it here so that we can have the pattern. We're going to do it here first as a grown-up, and then we'll do the baby issue if you like. How many 7 does 3 have? 3 has no 7s. 3 has no 7s. 3 has no 7s. 3 goes and joins the 0 becomes 30. And 30 has 4 7s. 4 7s are 28. 4 7s are 28. After we take away 28 from after we take away 28 from from 30, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 0 and becomes a 20. How many 7s does 20 have? But 20 doesn't quite have 
20 is more than two sevens, but less than three. If we convert this into one, if we pretend that 300 is 301, in other words, our answer now, we are pretending, we want to find out 300 over seven. 300 over seven is approximately 301 over seven. Why did we do it? Because we just realized that 301 actually is a multiple of seven. So one more time, how many seven does three have? Three has no sevens. What happens to the three? The three goes, it joins to zero, becomes a 30. How many sevens does 30 have? 30 has four sevens. Four sevens are 28. After we take away 28 from 30, we have a remainder of two. What happens to the two? Two goes and joins the one and becomes a 21. And 21 has three sevens. Well, the answer is, answer is this quantity is 43%. Or if you like, this quantity is approximately 43%. So look at your answer choices and find an answer choice that gives you something very close to 43%, just a little under 43. Why little under? Because we are overestimating. We are overestimating because in reality, the quantity that we're dealing with is not 301 divided by seven, it is 300 over seven. So the correct answer, whatever it is, is gonna be slightly less than 43%. Whichever, doesn't matter what it says, whatever answer choice that you see that is slightly less than 43%, there is only going to be one, and that's your answer. Let's look at the answer choices, number 24. 12%, 23%, 57%, and 42.9%. What do you know? 42.9% is letter D. Before we, before we uh, end this video, let's do this division longhand so you understand what we, what we did here. Let's do, let's look. So we're dividing 301. Well, let's start with 300 if you like. Let's start with 300 so you would understand why we approximated 300 as 301. This is what we are supposed to do, 300 divided by seven. Okay, watch what happens. We're gonna do it parallel. How many sevens, how many sevens does three have? Three has no sevens, three has no sevens. What happens to that three? That three goes and joins the zero and becomes a 30. And how many seven does 30 have? 30 has four sevens, 30 has four sevens. Uh, four sevens are 28, four sevens are 28. After we take away 28 from 30, we have a remainder of two. What happens to that two? That two goes and joins a zero and becomes a 20. And we realize at that point that 20 is not a multiple of seven, but 21 is. So we approximate. Instead of 20, let's pretend it is 21. This is where the approximation comes in. Now, it turns out 21 has three sevens. In other words, in other words, 300 divided by 7 is approximately 43%. And nobody in the right mind will disagree with you because we are not claiming, we are not claiming that 300 divided by 7 is 43%. What claim we are making here is 300 divided by 7 is approximately 43%, which is perfectly fine, which is perfectly legitimate. It's comp perfectly sane to say that. I assure you, nobody will come running to you with a straight jacket in their hand. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.